The 2018 Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series. Brought to you from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting. The Democratic race for the 7th Congressional District. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Burris, an investigative journalist with WABE 90.1. Welcome to the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series, originating from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting in Atlanta. This is the runoff debate among Democratic candidates for Georgia's Congressional District 7. District 7 covers part of Northeast Atlanta, including parts of Norcross, Cumming, Lawrenceville, and Duluth. Let's meet the candidates. They are in alphabetical order. Carolyn Bordeaux has been a professor at Georgia State's Andrew Young School of Public Policy since 2003. And David Kim is a publisher of Teen Inc., a national media outlet focused on writing, art, photos, and forums for teens. And now let's meet our panelists. Tom Baxter is a reporter covering politics and the South for Supporter Report. And Jacqueline Schultz is a multimedia journalist reporter with Fox 5 Atlanta. Well, now let's get started. For rules on today's debate, please visit the Atlanta Press Club website. That's atlantapressclub.org. To start the debate, each candidate will be asked a question by both of the panelists. Tom Baxter, you get the first question for David Kim. Mr. Kim, on the stop and on your website, you've talked about your concern that the Republicans are leading the country into a $30 trillion uh, deficit. And at the same time, you advocate renewed investments in our infrastructure. How do you square the two without a tax increase? And how much should that tax increase be and who should be taxed? Thanks, Tom. Um, you know, in my business, I've had the pleasure of running, you know, very large budgets, having uh, built a very successful company. And so there's always choices that need to be made when you make a budget. Uh, and choices that should be made should really be there to benefit, you know, the citizens of Georgia and the citizens of the 7th Congressional District, uh, as opposed to uh, giving uh, tax cuts uh, disproportionately to large businesses uh, and large enterprises like this current administration has done. Uh, we need to make sure that we have a budget that protects uh, Medicare, Social Security, uh, and other uh, you know, protected areas that we have made promises to, uh, like to our seniors, and you know, making sure that we find the money for infrastructure, for transportation, and, and other things are things that we can absolutely find you know, within the current budget and make sure that it happens in a way that people don't have uh, traffic issues, transportation issues uh, within our district and to make their lives better. All right, Jacqueline Schultz, you may now ask a question to Carolyn Bordeaux. Professor Bordeaux, on the topic of gun violence, gun control, and Second Amendment rights, you've called on your website for a ban on bump stocks, restricting civilian access to military-style weapons, restricting access to high-capacity magazines, and universal comprehensive background checks. Do you think your views will represent Georgians in the 7th? Yes, I do. I have um, talked with folks who are Republicans and Democrats. Uh, the other day, I called a gentleman who had given ten thousand dollars to the Democratic uh, to the Republican Party, and I was talking to him about you know different issues. And unsolicited, he brought up the issue of guns in schools, and he said, "You know, my wife is a teacher." And when I watch the shootings at Parkland, uh, you know, I, I think it's incredible. You know, it's, it's terrible what we're doing here. I don't think she should have a gun. She doesn't want to have a gun. And further, I'm willing to give some on gun safety measures. So, yes, I think there is bipartisan support. It is something where everybody is starting to see that this is a problem in this country. And as your congressperson, I will commit to address that issue. All right, thank you. And Tom Baxter, it's your turn to ask a question to Carolyn Bordeaux. Ms. Bordeaux, you've uh, applauded the efforts of the Gwinnett business community to do something about mass transit, but what specifically do you plan to do in Congress to make mass transit uh, a reality in your district? Yeah. So in the 7th Congressional District, we have a soul-sucking commute. Uh, Years ago, I used to work for Senator Ron Wyden, and one of the things that I did was help get funding for Portland's light rail. I also helped uh, Oregon get funding for livable communities initiatives, trans transit-oriented development around transit nodes. I think we need a representative in Congress who 
supports transit. We need some heavy rail going into Gwinnett, uh, the bus rapid transit to get around Gwinnett and into Forsyth is also going to be very, very important. And as your congressperson, I commit to bringing back dollars for us to help fund transit and other transportation alternatives. Right. Jacqueline Schultz, you get the final question, and that's to David Kim. Mr. Kim, you founded C2 Education, which tutors 50,000 students a year at numerous facilities across the country. With that being said, can we hear more about your thoughts on Betsy DeVos's push for school choice and whether you fundamentally agree or disagree with that philosophy and her proposals? Well, you know, I strongly believe that, you know, everyone deserves the best education possible, uh, regardless of zip code, uh, regardless of the color of your skin. Uh, and we need to be doing more uh, to invest in our children on a go-forward basis. Um, you know, I think we absolutely need to make sure that we're not, you know, continuing looking at our budget uh, and, and making cuts, you know, to children uh, year after year uh, when we do pass tax cuts uh, to large enterprises. And so when I look at Ms. DeVos's idea uh, of providing school choice, we need to make sure that there is accountability there and that, not we're, and that we're not simply enriching um, the, uh, the, the big money lobbyists that are trying to enrich themselves uh, through a possible privatization plan. Uh, and so, you know, definitely making sure that we support current school teachers today, making sure that they are properly resourced, not having to worry about old textbooks, that they're properly paid, uh, that their retirements and their health care are properly funded is something that I'll always be fighting for and fighting for our kids. All right, well, that concludes the first portion of the debate. The candidates will now ask a question to their opponent. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to ask the question, 60 seconds to respond, and 30 seconds for a rebuttal. By random selection, David Kim, you may ask the first question. Yeah, so I'm not going to ask why you voted Republican in the uh, 2012 Georgia state and presidential primaries, uh, but I will ask, when you worked for three years uh, for Casey Cagle, who we know is an avid Trump supporter, uh, and this Republican Senate helping them craft budgets that slashed education and health care, uh, which cut did you regret most? Uh, was it to Meals on Wheels? Uh, was it uh, closing down a veteran's home? Or was it the cutting of Medicaid benefits for the elderly, blind, and disabled by over $55 million? So David has come after me about the cuts that were made to the state budget. I was director of the Senate Budget and Evaluation Office, and I was staff during the Great Recession. And during that period, Georgia's budget dropped from a $20 billion budget to a $15 billion budget. It was a 20% decline. Now, let me just be clear. I was staff, and what staff can do is influence, educate, and persuade. Uh, it was a very dark time for the state. And I worked very hard to find reserves or ways that we could soften the blow of the Great Recession. I worked to put in a needs-based scholarship into the budget. But let me be clear. At the end of the day, staff has limited responsibility. The elected officials are the ones who make the final choices. I am running for office because I deeply disagree with the priorities of the leadership of of the state and in this district. I think we need to invest in education. I think we need to expand Medicaid and we need to invest in infrastructure. And I deeply disagree with the All priorities right. of this president as well. All right, that's our time. And uh, Mr. Kim, you do have 30 seconds for a rebuttal if you'd like to take it. Yeah, it. It still perplexes me because, I mean, your title was the executive director, right? I mean, you are there to support and advocate on behalf of all Georgians. And yet, you know, the cuts were deemed by the AJC to be not compassionate. They called them draconian. Uh, they said that there were other uh, areas that we could have looked at to tighten up the budget. And you failed to do so. And by failing to do so, you failed Georgians, you failed children. And so how can we expect you to stand up to the Republicans in Congress if you can't do so here in the state of Georgia? Carolyn Bordeaux, you may now ask your question of your opponent, David Kim. Okay. So, David, um, a week or so ago, uh, there were some of your campaign workers that were at a early voting location in Gwinnett. A poll worker asked them to step back from the lines where people were voting a few feet. These folks were translators which was fine. However, a week later, you came out and accused me of Jim Crow tactics suppressing the vote. My question for you is why do you feel compelled to lie and why haven't you apologized for such an outrageous claim? Mr. Kim, you have 60 seconds. 
Yes. So I think intimidation comes in many forms. Um, we know that the only path through victory uh, is through fo first time voters like myself, occasional voters uh, and unregistered voters. I mean, there are over 400,000 uh, in our district uh, who fit that definition. Uh, and if you're like me and you're tired of professional politicians who are telling us what we can't do, uh, telling us that, you know, we're not qualified to do something, blaming us for everything that goes wrong, uh, then join with us, vote with us, uh, and together we can win uh, because we're going to teach the professional politicians uh, a lesson that they'll never forget. Uh, you know, this is something that we need to, to make sure that we do uh, and continue to welcome and encourage new voters throughout the area. And Carolyn Berdeau, you have 30 seconds for a response, if you'd care to. I mean, I just want to be clear that Jim Crow was about systematic, violent repression. And I had nothing to do with the poll workers asking someone on his campaign to step back from the voting booth. And he then accused me on a video of suppressing the vote. These are outrageous claims and, frankly, smack of desperation. For those of uh, you all who are just joining us, this is the runoff debate between the Democratic candidates for Congressional District 7. We will now go back to the panel to ask questions to the candidate of their choice until we run out of time. As a point of moderator privilege, I may also ask the candidates questions. I will determine when a rebuttal is appropriate. Jacqueline Schultz, you get the first question in this round. And this is for both candidates. Incumbent Congressman Woodall has emphasized in his platform that immigration, quote, must be enforced and stands by the president's current immigration policies. The Migration Policy Institute states that there may be as much as 71,000 unauthorized residents in Gwinnett County in your area. Is there a solution, do you believe, to enforce the rule of law and yet establish this predicament of a number of undocumented immigrants in your your district. David Kim, we'll start with you. You know, the current, you know, immigration policy that's uh, enacted by this administration is neither, it's not humane, it's not just, uh, it's not constitutional, uh, and it's not reflective of who we are as, as Americans. Um, you know, we need to do something to make sure uh, that families are not separated, uh, that we're not uh, instilling fear into these communities. I mean, I've had a chance to meet uh, many dreamers. They live in fear every day. Uh, I'm a son of immigrants. Uh, I know what this predicament feels like very, very acutely. And we need to make sure that we are doing something uh, to reform immigration policy, to bring the 11 million people who are currently living in the shadows uh, out of it. Uh, they just want to eat and live uh, and have the opportunity, just like my parents did. Uh, and making sure that we do something compassionate for the dreamers, where most of this country believes we should give a pathway to citizenship, uh, those are the right things to do. That's compassion. That's who we are as Americans. Carolyn Bordeaux, you get the same question. OK. Um, I also believe we need to have an immigration policy that respects human dignity and recognizes economic reality. We can start at the top which is it is absolutely immoral and wrong to separate children from their parents at the border. I'm a mother of a six year old son and I see my son's face on those children. It is horrible. And if I'm elected, we will put a stop to it now and for all time. We do need to recognize the dreamers, though. Some people are undocumented, but they've actually lived here their entire lives. They uh, often go to get a job and don't realize that they are undocumented until they go ask their parents for their social security number. We need to give the dreamers a clear path to citizenship. And last of all, we have always benefited from attracting the best and the brightest to this country, and I support the programs that do that. Thank you. Tom Baxter, it's your turn to ask a question. Just to follow on that on that issue, and this doesn't require a, a, a lengthy reply, but uh, you know that some Democrats have called for the abolition of the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, or ICE as it's called, uh, in the wake of this controversy over children being separated from their parents. What is your position on that? Are you up or down on abolishing ICE? starting with me? Yeah, starting okay. with Ms. Ford. Um, I have not come out in favor of that yet. Uh, I think we need to reestablish basic human rights, though, as the foundation of our immigration policy. So it is mostly going back and making sure that ICE is operating in an ethical way. And Mr. Kim? Well, I think it's like a lot of things that are going on in this administration. Uh, our Congress needs to make sure that we're holding uh, each uh, 
branch of the government accountable, each agency accountable. Uh, when we're not holding the attorney general accountable, we're not holding ICE accountable for some of the atrocities that are going on, uh, it's shameful. Uh, the judges, uh, we've already passed a deadline in terms of uh, bringing the children back together. We only... want to abolish it, though. Would you would you be in favor of, of abolishing ICE? I, I think we need to, first of all, we need to make sure that we uh, supervise it, uh, we regulate it as uh, congressional, uh, as, as congressmen, um, and then we need to look at what an alternative solution might look like. I mean, what was there before ICE was INS. So if we do have something in place to abolish ICE, we need to be very thoughtful about it because we still need to protect our borders. We still need to protect, uh, you know, the safety of this country while making sure we do the right thing on behalf of the immigrants that are trying to get here uh, and, and to work hard. Thank you. Jacqueline Schultz of Fox 5, your next question. This one is from Mr. Kim. You're a deacon in your church. Reproductive rights is one of your platforms, as well as opposing the nomination of Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. How do you explain to many religious Georgians your, who call themselves pro-life, who take a stance against abortion, how you reason your political beliefs with your religious beliefs? Well, I think the uh, the attack on, on women's rights, you know, is, is beyond just the, the, the idea of pro-choice. I mean, we need to make sure that we are uh, providing uh, the right programs even before uh, a woman becomes pregnant and even after. Um, when we look at this country, we make it very, very hard uh, for a woman who is in a very difficult situation that might have to make that choice uh, to continue to have that child. Uh, our uh, adoption laws are very prohibitive. Um, we are not doing enough on the preventative side in terms of contraception, in terms of educating uh, people so that that choice wouldn't have to be made. Uh, you know, I, I'm a father of three children, and you know, my wife and I uh, would be very, very hard pressed uh, to, to make such a decision. Uh, but the reality is, um, you know, we have uh, laws and we have rules that are not uh, helping women today. And so we need to make sure that women's rights, which are American rights are strongly protected and and we go against you know any nominee uh, that might threaten uh, that that very justice there all right thank you mr. Kim Tom Baxter it's your turn to ask a question Ms. Bordeaux you are running for office in the heart of flat flat tax country congressman Woodall has been deeply identified with that and congressman Linder his predecessor was really the daddy of the flat tax idea what kind of ideas about taxes uh, can you offer to people uh, who really want their taxes to be simple and equal and, and, and think the flat tax is the right idea? Right. So, you know, for years I've worked in tax policy, and I can tell you that the flat tax is, uh, will disproportionately hurt low-income people. It is also very, very bad for business. Uh, what we need to do, we uh, obviously, Congressman Woodall just passed uh, an enormous tax cut for corporations and very wealthy individuals. And we need to go back and really revisit that. Uh, it added $1.5 trillion to the debt. And I would even say it's not a tax cut, it's a cash advance on our national credit card. What we need to do is go revisit that, and we need to make sure that it is paid for and that the tax benefits accrue to working and middle class families. And I would also like to see an expansion of the earned income tax credit so that everybody is able to get to a living wage to support their families. David Kim, I have a question for you. Um, you've said of this race that voters need real, clear, diverse and inclusive representation. How do you define diversity? And do you believe that your opponent does not embody that? Yes, Jim. So when I look at the district, uh, they call it a majority minority district. Um, you know, why do they even have to say it's a majority minority? The minorities are the majority, right? Uh, and then we look at, you know, what's been going on systematically, um, you know, in our elections and who our representation is uh, for the last 20 years. We know that the Republicans have been very successful uh, at keeping down the vote, at making sure that, you know, a lot of voters who are like myself felt very uh, apathetic or they felt, um, you know, that there was no difference in the candidates. It was a choice between Tweedledee and, and Tweedledum, for example. And, you know, we need to get out of this mindset that there are only professional politicians in this race. We need to get out of a lot of misconceptions that are out there uh, about voting in a lot of new communities. If we can do that, um, like Stacey Abrams has said, uh, if we can galvanize all these new voters, uh, we can never lose. Uh, that's the fact, and that's how we'll win this race in November. Do you believe, though, that your opponent standing next to you represents diversity as you define it? 
You know, I, I think as a as as a woman, uh, we need to have more elected officials. Um, you know, who are not just uh, stale, pale male officials like like Rob Woodall. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I do welcome the fact that she and I are both uh, here as candidates to further the causes of progressive and, and Democrats. And Carolyn Bordeaux, you do have 30 seconds to respond if you'd care okay, to. Okay, sure. I just want to say that I have put together a broad and diverse coalition of people who are supporting me. Um, at the more statewide level, I'm supported by Ambassador Andrew Young, by Congressman Hank Johnson, uh, by Senator Max Cleland. Uh, but I'm also supported by a diverse group of folks at the state and local level. This includes Senator Sam Zamoripa, uh, folks like uh, Donna McLeod uh, and Shelley Hutchison, who are running for office uh, in uh, the 7th Congressional District. Thank you for that. Jacqueline, you get to the next question. This is for Professor Bordeaux. You said publicly you will be a strong check on President Trump. In what ways do you see yourself as that? And even perhaps working with the current administration, how could you and would you do that? Yeah. So I do think you have to work in a bipartisan fashion where you can. Uh, when I worked for Senator Ron Wyden, every bill that I worked on was co-sponsored by a Republican. And obviously, you know, I've worked with people on both sides of the aisle. President Trump really represents something new, something really extreme. And you can see this in his racist, sexist comments. You can see this in his ripping up of international alliances. Um, you can see this in his flouting of basic ethical norms. And I think Congress has a real role to play in making sure that our current president is transparent, for instance, making sure that the Mueller investigation continues, uh, making sure that President Trump releases his tax returns. Uh, there are many different things that Congress can do to make sure that this president is held accountable for what he does. And David Kim, I'd like to give you the opportunity to answer the same question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we need to make sure uh, that this uh, government is, is is held accountable. I'm, I'm very disturbed uh, by the recent Supreme Court nominee uh, who believes that Congress should shield the president from possible indictment. Uh, you know, we need to allow, uh, you know, the investigation that's going on. And if there are uh, crimes that were committed, if there were laws that were broken, uh, no one is above the law. Um, and that's what good government does. Good government is responsible to its people. It serves uh, the constituents of our district. Uh, and, and that's been one of my promises. That's one of the reasons why I got into this race uh, is that I am tired uh, of politics as, as usual. I'm tired of the divisiveness. Um, you know, we need to get into that mindset of being able to serve our constituents, being accessible and accountable to everyone. Candidates, thank you. thank you. That's all the time we have for questions. Each candidate will now have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Carolyn Bordeaux, you get the first closing statement. So uh, my opponent has attacked me for budget cuts, but I just want to point out that he has never taken a stand for anything in a public arena. Uh, he has never voted until he voted for himself. He has never protested about budget cuts until it was politically expedient for him to do so. I am here to take a stand for the values that we believe in. I believe in a country that is global, inclusive, and diverse, not one that is racist, sexist, and isolationist. I believe that we need a government that cares for us, that provides basic health care benefits, that provides paid maternity leave, that provides a world-class education and world-class infrastructure. Um, I believe we need a government that protects our environment. And I have put together a coalition of diverse people from across the 7th Congressional District that will be a force to be reckoned with in the fall. And we are here to take a stand for the values we believe in. I would appreciate your support on July, <laughs> July 24th. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And David Kim, you get the final closing statement. You know, the health care and education cuts that enacted in Washington are, are costing lives and is hurting families here in Georgia. Uh, six hospitals have closed, thousands are uninsured, uh, and the cuts passed when Carolyn worked for the Republican Senate and Casey Cagle, they hurt too. Um, we need to make sure uh, that, that this doesn't happen again. Uh, you claim that you didn't make those health care cuts, but you did. In 2009 alone, uh, Medicaid benefits were slashed by $25 million. Health care is a right, and I will fight for you until we have access to affordable coverage. Uh, 
you know, if you're fed up with Washington and professional lifelong politicians, uh, if you're a first time voter like me, uh, join us. Uh, it's time for economic and racial justice, uh, but it'll never happen unless we unite together uh, against the division we see all around us. Uh, if you're ready to fight to keep our promises to our seniors uh, for a better future for our children and send a champion of the New South to Washington, join us. Uh, my name is David Kim. I ask for your support. Uh, thank you very much and God bless America. All right, thank you. And that concludes our debate. We'd like to remind voters that the runoff election will be held this Tuesday, a week from this Tuesday, July 24th, and early voting has already begun. Our thanks to the candidates and to our panel of journalists. We'd also like to thank the Atlanta Press Club for arranging today's debate. For more information about the Atlanta Press Club and all of the runoff debates they will host, visit atlantapressclub.org. This debate will be archived there and on Georgia Public Broadcasting's website. That's gpb.org. I'm Jim Burris. Thanks for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Ladder Milk Young Debate Series. Thank you.